27 minutes to 8 o'clock. Welcome back. Now, more than 175 million children. That's around half of pre-primary age children globally are not enrolled in education institutions. In low-income countries, the picture is much bleaker, with only one in five children enrolled. This is according to a UNICEF report released this morning. This is the first ever global report by UNICEF on pre-primary education. Well, for more on this, we are joined via Skype by James Elder, UNICEF's Chief of Communication for Eastern and Southern Africa. Mr. Elder, good morning and thank you very much uh, for your time. The numbers are not looking good. It's not really a pretty picture considering how critical early childhood development is. Well, you're spot on, Dan. I mean, I think that's beyond the numbers and they can be, <clears throat> they can be overwhelming. As you mentioned, there are 175 million in this part of the world, Eastern and Southern Africa, 22 million kids, uh, not in pre-primary. But why is that important? Is because in the last 10 or 15 years, the science and the economics has become absolutely overwhelming. There is no more important time in a child's brain development than naught to five. Uh, it's ironic. We spend so much investment in our children and their teenage years, which is all correct. But that naught to five period was when the brain is developing at the fastest possible period. It will never develop at that speed again. And it's been shown from all sorts of economic and scientific surveys that it's also the time that a, that a society can reap the greatest economic rewards, which sounds odd when you're talking about two or three year olds. But it means, for example, in South Africa, every rand you invest in that pre-primary will give a five or six fold return per child over the course of their lifetime. So pre-primary is the great equaliser. It is not about biology. This is about how you can bring up those kids who have lived on the margins and who haven't had opportunities. But without pre-primary, you tend to cement inequalities. Now, Mr. Elder, what are the key uh, reasons behind this? What have you found? I think a couple of things. I think one is, is, is quite fair enough, is that governments around the world have invested a lot of time and money into primary school, and the numbers there are very good. There are still questions with quality, as I'm sure some of your parents and, and viewers would say about their kids in schools. These numbers are too great, but primary education numbers are pretty terrific around the world, across Southern Africa. But what we found is, as I say, that the importance of pre-primary is fundamental, and those there's a great area to catch up there. There's, a, there's an international recommendation, for example, that around 10% of a country's education budget should go to uh, primary, pre-primary rather. And there's not a country that's hitting 2%. Now, it's important to note that South Africa is the leader in this region by a long way. Around nine out of 10 kids have done a year of uh, pre-primary before, uh, before they get into first grade, but only one in three have done more than that. So South Africa is leading the way. Other countries are trying to follow that, but I think South Africa would also acknowledge that there need to be a lot more resources. We need to make sure kids just aren't in pre-primary, but there's some quality. And I guess the one other thing I'd mention, Dan, is that what's really important is governments struggle with this and we really push governments for the political and the financial commitment is there's so much mums and dads can do. And that's the really nice thing about early childhood. There's so much basic stimulus that any caregiver, a big sister, an auntie, a grandmother, a go-go, a mum or dad can do. And that's about playing with your young one, singing to them when they're one or two years old, talking to them, telling them stories, reading them books, telling them stories about their, their family. That interaction has been shown to do incredible stimuli to their brain and to prepare them. But of course, putting them in a formal setting with good quality teaching for pre-primary is, is of fundamental importance. But of course, in the real world, in low-income countries, uh, Mr. Elder, poverty is still a big challenge, and some of them are faced with uh, conflicts. And in other areas, women are so disadvantaged, they're not even able themselves to get education. No, you're absolutely right. And this is where inequality just perpetuates itself. We know, for example, that... If a young woman has finished secondary school, she's five times more likely when she becomes a mum to send her, her daughter or her son to pre-primary. So we need to break that, that inequality. If we don't break it now, then it will continue generation to generation. And as you say, those children on the margins now won't have opportunities when they're 15 or 16. And pre-primary is the way to do that. And it's not terribly expensive. And as I say, there is also that ability, irrespective of people's financial status, 
just to make sure they stimulus, they have stimulus with their little ones, they play with their little ones, they engage with them. Uh, there's a lot of mothers who are on, who are the poorest people who spend a lot of time with their children because they are working. Um, but yes, ultimately it does require political and financial commitment. But the good news is we've seen time and again that that financial commitment is paid for over and over. There literally, Dan, is not another public sector investment that reaps more rewards than pre-primary education for our littlest kids. Okay, let me just focus here at home before I let you go. You mentioned financial commitment. In this year's budget, our finance minister, Dito Mboweni, said 262 billion rand is being set aside for basic education in South Africa. And at the same time, early childhood development is being moved or transferred from falling under social development to now fall under basic education. It looks like they're moving in the right direction to making sure that early childhood development is under and benefits from this huge basic education department. But not every country can afford such a huge slice of its national budget for education. No, you're spot on. First thing is there, South Africa is a leader. And that idea that that policy ambition to universalise pre-primary for at least one year for, for the littler South Africans is brilliant and something that organisations like mine, like UNICEF, takes around to countries in the region. Now, yes, South Africa has a bigger budget and it's always difficult. A finance minister only has 100% and you can't ask them to, you know, to take 5% somewhere and if it's essential. But... Again, we don't find another social sector. We don't find another sector that has the same economic return. So it's about long-term planning, and it's ultimately looking at, yes, the country's in poverty, and if it wants to ensure its next generation, knowing that we have the biggest population boom pretty much in recorded history, if it wants to ensure that generation is employable, has the skills, are active members of, of a community, of a democracy, then they do need to start when these, then, when these kids are one, two, three years old. Thank you very much, James Elder there from UNICEF, talking about the first ever global report on pre-primary education. 175 million children around the world are deprived of such education, but it is critical for the future of any country that we focus on early childhood development. Now,